Hello everyone, welcome to today's family program, and I'm your guest speaker, Tony Liu. I'm a third year grad student in IBA or Integrated Visual Arts program. My work consists of character design, illustration, and graphic novel, aka comics. Today, I'll be talking about manga and give you guys a demo on drawing the character's head in manga style. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to ask you guys is, what does manga mean? Some of you might know the answer already. Manga is Japanese word for comics. What you may not know is that the word manga is composed of the two kanji. Man means whimsical or impromptu, and ga means pictures. It is coined in the 1800s by the famous ukiyo-e artist Kokusai to refer to the doodles in his sketchbook. However, the first use of the word in the modern sense was later by Rakuten Kitazawa, who was the first professional cartoonist in Japan. So what was the first manga existed? You may wonder. Well, many believe that manga are originated from the school dating back to the 12th century and believe they represent the basis for the right to left reading style. During the Edo period, there was also a book of drawings embedded the concept of manga called Toba Ihan. But the word manga, as I mentioned in the previous slide, didn't come into common usage until the late 18th century, with the publication of such work as, sorry if I mispronounce the following name here, Santo Kyoden's picture book, Shujino Yukikai, Aikawa Miwa's manga Hyakujo, and, and Hokusai's manga books. So these are all considered as some of the oldest manga in the history. And now let's move on to the modern period. In the immediate post-war period, manga are mostly children's adventure stories and family newspaper strips. This is also the period where we see many famous works from the father of manga, Osamu Tezuka, for example, Astro Boy and Princess Night. As we get into the 1960s, anime TV shows were produced for the first time, and manga went wild with speed lines, fast cars, and action heroes. 1970s is known as the golden age of manga. A variety of genres of manga appear, uh, like epic space opera, horror stories, historical drama, romance, as well as politics and religion. It was also the first time when women, rather than men, created a story in shoujo manga. In the 1980s, manga became big business with publishers and editors relying on readers' poll to guide the directions of the story. And at the same time, anime exerts a growing influence on manga character design. For example, eyes get bigger, hair get wilder, body get slimmer, which is probably why we have the manga style. But we'll talk about that later. In the mid-1990s, Japanese economy went to a recession, which affected the manga in the process. Publishers begin to rely on licensing and finding new niche markets such as video game manga, uh, pachinko manga, or love manga. And afterward, in 2000s, um, the rise of the internet and new technology drastically changed the reading and buying habits. People are now reading mangas in store without buying, learning manga from friends, or going to all you can read manga cafe, which resulted in publishers thinking more in global terms as well as distributing through new media, for example, digitizing the manga. In Japan, manga are usually serialized in large manga magazines, often containing many other stories, um, each present in a single episode with approximately 20 to 40 pages. Um, and after the manga being serialized for a while, it, individual mangas will then reprint as graphic novels. The manga magazines are aimed at particular, particular gender and age group. Um, there are four demographics of manga, uh, which are shonen, shoujo, seinen, and josei. So shonen, or boy manga, aim at boys from early elementary school to their late teens. Um, shonen manga spill over with action, sports, battle scenes, um, Science fiction and fantasy are also common subjects in shonen manga. 
shoujo or gross manga. Um, the most popular subjects of it are romance, comedy, drama. Although, mystery, uh, horrors, and boys' love story are also featured in specialty magazine for the female readers. Uh, Senen uh, means young men, uh, but the term describes all mangas aimed at for the male reader. Uh, so business, crime, and political dramas, as well as historical and military adventures are popular subjects among Senen manga. Lastly, Jose or women's manga. Um, for college age to mid age women, uh, Jose manga deal mostly with work family, and romance. Now, the topic that we are here for, manga style. Many people want to draw in manga style, including myself when I first began to draw. But the fact is, manga don't really have a single style. Because manga aren't a single genre, with big eyes, big lines, or samurai swords. The term manga covers all Japanese comics and every manga artist has his or her own specific style. If, you're in, if you are interested in manga, you probably have a few favorite manga artists in your mind already. Um, so one suggestion I will give you is to study his or her work, that is how they draw the characters and their mark making, so that you see the artistic choice they made that makes their style. However, there are actually some artistic conventions used in the mainstream manga, uh, which I briefly mentioned when we look at the history timeline of manga, right? Um, so here, I'm only going to cover the head. Um, so large eyes, female characters usually have larger eyes than male characters. Um, small nose, with only a brief L-shaped mark to locate limb, uh, sometimes with two nose holes, and Sometimes none when the character is facing forward. Uh, flat face, uh, spiky pointy hair, uh, and this is the result of a simplification, and I'll talk about it as I begin the demo. And here's the image kind of shows different manga artists take on the fire feet as um, so which I think is pretty interesting. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is that I will we draw Robert Downey Jr. in manga style so that you can see some of the choices I make to turn Robert Downey Jr. into a manga style person. So grab your drawing tools and some papers and feel free to follow along with me. Alright? Alright, so whenever I draw the face, I will begin with a circle. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Um, Okay, you can see mine is not that perfect either. Um, so, what I want you to do first is to put down a circle on your paper, and then I want you, I want you guys to take out like one eighth from each side of that circle. And um, the reason why I'm doing this is because when we look at the face in front of you, it is more like a rectangular shape rather than a circular shape, right? So, this is why we put that two lines on the side, and let's using these two lines and draw a rectangle inside that circle. Again, does not be perfect. Alright, and now I want you guys to also divide that rectangular shape into a half, like this. And now, I want you guys to take a measurement from the top of the circle in that middle line and then bring down to so this area. I want you guys to bring it down from this to the bottom. So, just roughly estimate it, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, and afterward, you will connect from this, uh, this circle, the edge of the circle to that last line, to that new line that we just drew there. So something like this. All right, so here are some things that you need to know. Um, so we have four lines right here, right? So 
the first line is going to be the indication of the here line all right the second line right here which is a little bit tilted so let me redraw it really quick it's going to be where eyebrows is at and then the third line right here that is going to be the bottom of your nose and then the fourth line is going to be your chin and of course this is just a pseudo code that can help you guys to draw uh, the figures uh, really quickly so and since we know the face is always symmetry so let's put down a line in the center as the symmetry line all right and that's also connect from closer to this point and then let's draw two lines downward and with a little bit curve at the end like this uh, as the neckline uh, because we just don't want the head we don't want just the head floating out there so that's why we always draw a neckline to indicate uh, this is the head all right so if you are doing this uh, on the paper uh, i would recommend you to grab a new paper and use that as a reference uh, for you to draw the head uh, but if you are using the digital software uh, then you can turn that layers into 50 percent and then create a new layers on the top of it um, so now that we have a guideline for our character's head now let's take a look at the characters now so one thing that i always do when i draw my character is is understanding what makes them who they are and the facial features and the hairstyles are the key points here so what i want what i'm going to do now is to analyze robert downey jr and understand what makes robert downey jr robert downey jr right so i'm gonna take a quickly come back come to here and then analyzing robert downey jr's face all right so Let's see. So here in this movie poster of Endgame, uh, we know that Robert Downey Jr. has that intense looking um, because Endgame is really intense. Um, don't spoil me because I still haven't watched the movie yet. Um, so anyway, so he has that intense looking right here. All right. And then he has that sharp eyebrow sharp thick eyebrow all right and then and let's take a look at the nose he has sort of big nose in here sort of big nose and then what else we can see in here the six in goatee and mustache mustache and goatee And that cheekbone is also very visible. Alright. And well, Robert Downey Jr. hairstyle is also different than let's say Chris Evans, right? So and here we can quickly just block that hair shape into three different chunks, the top, right, and the left. So these are the several things that we notice in here. And then remember what we talked about earlier about some of the artistic convention in manga style um, big eyes spiky hair uh, flat face and the L-shaped nose L-shaped nose alright so before we begin to draw Robert Downey Jr. on our our board. So this one concept I want to talk about right away is the dark accents. The dark the dark accents are the outline that we see in anime in the cartoon, uh, which is really a key point in here uh, in drawing the characters in manga style because we are drawing the outline. We are not drawing every single details in here. 
So one thing to think about the dark, uh, dark accents is the outline, the contour of the characters, of course. And another thing that can help you to, you know, figure out where to put the dark accents is the shadows, uh, where it is casting, right? So knowing all this, let's come back to our upper now. And now since we have the guideline, it will be much easier for us to put all the features that we see in here in our artboard. All right. So first, the hairline we can quickly put in there, since that's going to that's where the line number one is for. So let's take it again. Uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s hairline. It's kind of like straight line with a little bit triangles in the center. Right. So let's put a line in here. All right, and we can also put that hair lines in here quickly. Like this shape and then going downward, right? And let's let's plug in the hair. It, it may look pretty weird at first, but let's plug in here. So that he, so that it's not he's not bolted. All right. So of course we'll work on the hair later. Um, so, but now let's move on to the eyebrow, which is the name mark number two. So in here, we noticed earlier that Robert Downey Jr. has thick, sharp eyebrow. So let's put that in here. So let's use that line to guide us where to put our eyebrows. So I'm gonna put the bottom line first, and then I'm gonna increase the dimension to increase the thickness of his eyebrow. We know it's thick and it's sharp. We can put it right here. Something like this. And we also know he has that intense looking. And look at here. It's we can see the dark accents here because that's where the muscles be, uh, muscles begin to work and then that create that shadows in here. Which we can do it. We can put lightly in here uh, because usually uh, when we uh, because usually the muscles shadows are not as dark as the outline um, so that's why we only put really lightly lines in there uh, to indicate that muscles um, so that's the part of the reason all right and then the eye shape that we know well actually let's begin with the nose first so the nose we talked about earlier, we can do the L shape like this, or we can do two nose hole like this, or you can not do any nose at all. Um, but for me, um, my one of my biggest influences is Naruto's. Um, so in Naruto's characters, uh, when they have frontal characters, they do nose hole instead of the L shape. So that's what I'm going to do. And like I said before, when you look at a lot of artists, you begin to know what they do, what kind of choices they make, and you can copy their style uh, in that at first through that. So here I'm going to use Naruto's technique to help me to draw the nose. And we know Robert Downey Jr. has sort of big nose. And you can see right here, uh, the nose hole are a bit further apart. So we are going to draw the nose hole. But we're gonna make it bigger. Not too big, but because small nose is still, it kind of like the feature of manga characters. So I'm gonna two nose hole in here to indicate that is the nose. It may be with a little bit indication right here uh, it indicates that nose bridge, right? And now let's draw the eyes. Let's build in the eyes, shall we? Um, so you can also divide right here as one third. Uh, that's going to be the center of the eyes. All right. And usually, uh, when we draw the eyes in manga, we draw something more like a Parallel, parallel round shape, something like this, and it depends on your characters. It can be big, 
But in this case, since we're drawing Robert Downey Jr., uh, we can make the eyes a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be that big. Uh, we can make it smaller um, and then follow either the parallel shape or kind of more like a diamond shape. Um, but one thing I need to point out though, this line right here, this point right here is indicating where the eyeballs is at. Um, so when you have eyeball that place right here, you probably will need to move that point so that it is begin from uh, the eyeballs. All right, so that's just something for you guys to know. So let's put in the eyes now, shall we? So we can see Robert Downey Jr.'s eyes is more like a parallelogram, like this one right here. So we are gonna use this as the way to help us draw. And also, also, the top of the eyes is usually darker than the bottom. Um, it's because that's going, that's where you cast the shadow. And then also, when you put the eye shadows, eye lines, that's going to be where you put it. So usually, the top, the top of the eyes is darker than the bottom. So let's put it in there. So let's have that parallelogram shape in here. I'm not sure if I pronounced that word correct. In here. And let's do the eyeballs. And the eyeballs, of course, is going to be circle. And you can make the eyes big to, make, to match with the, the manga style. So I'm just make, gonna make it a little bit big, not too big, just a little bit big. Something like this. Alright. And let's put on the other side as well. Top is darker. Bottom is smaller. And then I'm gonna move, actually I'm gonna move this eyes will be above and actually I'll do further moving afterward because I can immediately see these eyes probably need to move down a little bit. Move a little bit, okay. Alright, so we have the eyes placed as well. Alright. So now let's work on the details. Um, sometimes you can just put the uh, the pupils in there um, but some artists they will also put the highlights in there and here um, we know the highlights is coming from a little bit top right so we can put that in there of course um, but just make sure that when you put the highlights in there uh, make sure that the directions are correct um, you don't want to put something like this you don't want to put one highlight on the other side and then the other one on the other side uh, because the highlights is where uh, the direction of the lights come from, so it's going to be the same. So just keep that in mind. Or if you are interested in shoujo manga, uh, they do some crazy eyes, uh, eye shape and eye style, so you can look into that. But for me, I think I'm just going to do a little bit more closer to what we see on here which is the pupils and the highlights in there. All right. So I'm going to fix it a little bit. And we know Robert Downey Jr. has double eyelash, so we can put that in there as well. All right. So now let's take a look at the mouth. And mouth, again, between the three and four, uh, it's also where you can divide that area into three chunks as well. 
Um, the 3.1 is going to be where your mouth is at. Uh, 3.2, uh, that's going to be the chin muscles. So this part is going to be a chin muscle. All right. So with that knowledge, and then this part is going to be chin muscles. So we can put the mouth in there right now. And we know he is intense. So that's why we need to make him a little bit frowny face in here. You can draw a straight line and then with two end points a bit thicker. All right. And here is also the artistic choice coming in. Uh, usually, I like to put the bottom of the lips in there, but sometimes, like bleach, uh, he like to put also put the top on there. Um, so it's up to your choice. But for me, I think I'm just gonna put the bottom, uh, bottom lips in there, like this. All right. So now it looks weird, uh, because Robert Downey Jr has his signature mustache and goatee. So let's put that in there, shall we? So let's put that here, just a little bit above that mouse line. And at the bottom, we see that goatee forming here. We can block in the shape really quickly for now, and then we'll come back to it later. So now you will say, geez, that looks really bad. And I agree, <laughs> it looks really bad when we just block in that mustache in there. So this is where I, when I say earlier, when you have favorite manga artists, you should look at what they do uh, in their choices. So here, I also prepare some of the examples for me to look at. So specifically, let's look at uh, Naruto's Metal Alchemist and also Bleach. Let's see what I do with the beard, with, uh, with the character that has beard, all right? So, the first one right here, you can see that the eighth tails, you can see the way he does with the beard is to put the outline for the beard. So, which is what we did, but he doesn't look really well, right? So let's move on. And in, in Full Metal Alchemist, we see uh, Edward's dad also has a similar approach, but you can see he still put a few more lines to indicate that is the mustache. So let's see what that make a difference. Which is mm, still pretty bad. Um, so now let's look at one more example, shall we? And let's take a look at this character right here. Jinsei, uh, I think that's his name. Um, sorry if I mispronounced his name or if I forget if I got the name wrong. Uh, right here we can see Jinsei's uh, his mustache is more like a sketchy mark in here, in which we can apply because Jinsei also has a black facial hair, and like Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. also has black facial hair. So what we can do? So let's apply that technique in there. Let's have that like sketchy lines in there and then fill in his mustache. And actually, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s mustache has a little bit more at the end. So let's put that lines in there. Put a few gold teas in here. All right. So now I think it's much better than a few few minutes ago, right? Don't you think? I think so. It's much much better to be honest. Let's do that. And then since we know uh, the black 
uh, the facial hair is black, so let's also fill in our eyebrows with black color. And I'm gonna make it thicker. And again, let's have that sketchy lines in there. Alright? So, now we begin to kind of see Robert Downey Jr.'s accents in there. Alright? But we're not finished yet. Because we still have his ear to fill in, and then we also know that cheekbone is also important. So let's fill in with the ear in there. So ear will be begin from this point, from the center of the eye, and what you want to do is to think of your mark sh handle shape, something like this. This is how most artists do uh, for their ear shape. Uh, they simplify the form uh, in there. So we can draw that mark handle shape in there for both ear, begin from there. Going up and then downward as a mark shape, mark handle shape. And of course, since we have a reference, you can actually take a look at what Robert Downey Jr.'s ear looks like in here. And you can see it's more like a kind of like butterfly wings shape, sort of. Um, but for me, I think I'm just gonna stick with it. And of course, we have a reference, you can take a look at what they do, right? Kind of more like a mark shape that I show you guys right here. So, and let's fill in with all the lines, shall we? Since we didn't do that earlier, let's fill in that uh, jaw line there for Robert Downey Jr. And I'm gonna make him the mouse a bit more visible down there. All right? And then cheekbone that we notice is coming from here, the bottom, and which is going to be useful because this line, this circle, is going to be where your uh, jawline is placed. And if I drew the perfect circle earlier, then this line would be matching there, but oh well, it's alright. So, uh, so let's put that jawline in there, shall we? We can follow the circles on here, but we cannot see it, so. So here you go. Alright, so we kind of begin have that in there. And actually, let's also put these two uh, lines in here, shall we? Because we know Robert Downey Jr. has said to be H, so... And actually, I also need to make the mustache a little bit smaller. It was a little bit too big. So, like this. And make it even a little bit more symmetry. A little bit more symmetry in here, shall we? So as you kind of look at your characters, um, you can kind of like just go in back and forth and try to fix anything that you think are not correct. So right here, I think that's pretty good. And we put uh, the muscle line here to indicate um, his intense uh, looking, like what we did up here with the eyebrow muscles in here, right? So let's fix that a bit and we can yeah, let's do a little bit of like that. And then let's also draw the neckline there, so that it doesn't look too weird. Maybe the bottom of the chin. We also need to outline that. Alright, so we begin slowly to have Robert Downey Jr.'s face. As I fix it a bit more, and actually I need to use different erasers. Fix that even more. You can see I'm always looking at the outline of the of the shape of this character. And then he's facing forward, so that's why the eye should be more at the center. And the highlights is a little too big. Maybe I should fix it later, but when I see it right now, I just want to fix it, so sorry about that. Alright, so now let's move on. After 
I adjust that eyebrow. Alright, now let's move on. So now the hair. Um, another key features about manga characters is that we can kind of see that the hair end up pointed, um, and that spiky hair characteristic. And you know, you may just draw it because oh, a lot of manga artists do it. But here's the reason why they do it. So remember the word I talked about earlier, simplification. That's the concept behind it, because the manga artists are not paid to do every individual hairs. So what we're gonna do is that we can take a look at the hair, and let's say, okay, so here is one group. We group this hair together, and maybe there's another group right here, in here, as well as here. So you can see as I group all this hair together, you can see this forms an angle right here, right? This, like when I put this down there, you can see that spiky hair appear in here. So that's the reason why, because we are simplifying, simplifying our form um, so that it is become a group of hair instead of we are drawing each and every individual hair out. Um, it could, but most of the time we don't have the time to do something like that. So we are always kind of just group some of them together. So that's why you can see the hair in manga character is kind of like sometimes it's kind of spiky looking. So that's the reason why. So now that we group some of the hair together, we can kind of group this. So we're gonna group that. That's going to be one. We we'll begin from here. We're going to draw the hairs like this and of course I'm gonna block in the shape really quick and then readjust how I want my spiky here to look like right so then this maybe this here should be a bit closer like this like this and then here we can also see some of the hair so we can Actually, we can make them as a group first, and then we can divide that out afterward. Uh, maybe it will look great as a group already. So, here we have another group, right? And lastly, the last group right up here. We have that shape, and then we also have one that's sticking out right here. Like this. Alright? And here, we can also group a little bit. Like here and here, something like this. So let's take that. Here we are forming that group, we are having that group. And then we're going down, let's actually make it just a group. Something like this. On the other side, same thing, we're gonna do the same. Right here, we have that curvy. Ooh. We have this shape right here, so let's put that in. So that fits. And now let's erase the, the lines that we blocked in early, and so that we can decide it, how much details uh, that we want to get into in here, or how much change that we need to make to make the hair look nicer. So here I can see, maybe I want, so I'm gonna erase right here for you guys to see. Uh, so here, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I would like to have a few more here in here. I have a few more that is popping out from there. Right? And here, maybe I would like to have this here still in there. And I want to make this more curvier. Maybe I'll break this as this part and this. So something like this. So I want to break this part as something like this. And going downward.
And maybe I don't want to separate this anymore. I want to group this as a whole group. Group that as the whole group. Right? Something like this. And with a few more spiky hair looking at the end. Right? And right here, since we noticed the, the hair lines has acting like this and here like this, we can put that in there to indicate the group, right? Here, a little bit, and here, and then one coming from here to indicate that movements of the hair. Instead of drawing out each each and individual hair movements, we can just select it uh, to pick a few that can indicate the hair, right? Here we know that this is going this way, so we can have that one begin from here. And then here is going this way, right? We can just kind of like play around with the uh, how we're gonna do with the hair. And remember, one of the, another interesting uh, style. Of, a, of an anime in character design, that is the hair gets wilder. So you can see it's beginning to get crazy in here, um, but I try to not make it too crazy um, so that we can still have that, uh, the realistic experience in, in our Robert Downey Jr. design, right? So I'm gonna just down a little bit like this. You know, actually, I'm gonna make this even lighter. I don't want it to be too distracting. Alright, and here we can have this a little bit bigger now. Maybe have one more spiky here in between. So this is a point where you can just begin to readjust uh, based on your, you know, aesthetic. Of the character looks like and you can again to adjust uh, using all the things that you know about manga and put it in there and which is why I say when you have a manga artist that you like and that you admire you should always begin to look at what they did with their character layer uh, and then apply on your own characters right and here I'm just gonna actually I don't like how it looks like, so I'm just gonna make it as kind of more circular shape, and then with this a few more spiky going downward because that's two different group, right? So and because the hair here is acting differently, it's going like this, right? So which is kind of what we want to mimic in here as well. So I'm gonna put one here that is going outward like that. Few more here, few more spiky here. If I if I say like that movement, and slowly going downward like that. And here, let's notice the hair is in front of the ear, so let's block that. Here we also notice. The uh, hair is going this way, um, so we can probably put a few that is indicating the hair directions in here as well. So something like this. And since I'm doing digitally, uh, what I can do is I can fill in the shape with black color. If oops, that didn't go well because I have this gap. I can do is fill in the gap in here um, for the hair color so that we keep our you know our hair color consistent instead of just the beard is black but the hair is white um, which can happen uh, but we, in this case we don't want it to look like that right and here on the other side I believe the hair is also overlapping the ear And let's just make that hairline 
bit more visible alright and then maybe put that two line here shall we here so voila here we go uh, here is kind of like how I take um, uh, Robert Downey Jr's uh, in manga style um, so I'm gonna fix a few more and then I'll wrap it up So I think this is pretty pretty good for now. So here is what I got afterward for you guys. Um, so it's a little bit better, uh, but still have a lot to work on. But I think this is pretty good enough for me. Um, so yeah. Well, that's all for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the demo, um, and I hope you guys. Then something from this demo as well. Um, 
So thank you so much. As always, uh, please stay safe and healthy and have a good weekend, guys.